Hi guys, so lovely to meet you. I love the I love the fits. You guys look really, really good. How do you? You, you got joking? sparkles on. We, we Thank you. Got sparkles on. She got sparkles on. We're sparkly. <laughs> Matching. <laughs> But you guys sort of, I guess, in a sense, are also matching because you fill the sort of standing warrior roles for this for this series. And you kind of do a little bit more of the heavy lifting than sort of the rest of the party. Can you talk me through a little bit of the what the training process was like? You know, how do you learn to fight with a sword or, you know, do all the other sort of fantastical things that you do for the show? Yeah, well, we did a 30 day long boot camp where we before we even started on camera, we, we learned to sword fight and. Uh, horse ride and we did a lot of rehearsal and character building time and then um, we did around two hours of personal training a day um, so we all got quite strong and quite fit which gave us the stamina and the sword fighting was was intense but incredible but that that period of time gave us the opportunity to develop a, a fighting style that was our own um, and unique to the characters and so it became organic and it was yeah really great Amr, you also are in the Wheel of Time, which is a sort of separate high fantasy series. Mm. Is there any sort of, are, are there similarities between working on that and working on this or is sort of, you know, Disney and then that sort of two separate realms entirely? Yeah, I think the the, the scale of that show is is so tremendous and the story is so rich and, and it prepares you for this world that you have to step onto and not be too blindsided by the fact that you're in a ginormous castle um film set um so it was it, you know it's helpful to have been there and meet meet those incredible actors and work on it but um but willow although it has a similar sense of scale it was a much smaller concept really it was like let's take this motley crew and push them through to their limits and see how they develop and that was a really lovely thing to do yeah and so uh aaron you play into the sort of knight and and princess sort of romance trope quite a bit in this show and it's very much the emotional core of the series. So what was that like sort of, I guess, being the emotional core of, of the show? Uh, I, I think it is quite ironic because I think it, when you first meet Jade, she um, has a really hard time expressing her emotions. I think she pushes a lot of stuff down. I just think there's a lot of things from her her past and um, how she feels. And her, yeah, I think she finds it quite hard to express herself. Um, and it's quite nice. You see her go on this journey and, and ease up a little bit and she realizes she doesn't have to quite keep everything in. And sort of similarly to that, that the original film is very much the story of, of hope and perseverance and sort of togetherness. And obviously the show, the show, you know, exudes that quite a bit. What do you guys hope people take from this series that's maybe a little bit different from the film? I think it's just it's just modernized in the is that a word? Yeah. Uh, modernized in the uh, issues that are addressed. I think um, the things that the characters go through have just become more modern as the world has changed. Mm. Um, and I think the things that are kind of in this magical world are just metaphors for, for more real life things that people are going through. Yeah, and I don't think it's overtly political or anything like that. It's It's just a diverse group of personalities more than anything all learning that they're going through something together and trying to figure out who they are and what, you know, what their purpose is. And that's reflective of the real world. And that's the nicest thing about it is it does that with humor and magic and in beautiful forests. It does. And it's, it's absolutely wonderful, but thank you guys so much for talking to me today. I had a wonderful time. Take care.